Welcome to Life with Lori. Lori's special guests are Lori's house moms, Elena and Rose, with their precious babies. And now here's your host, Lori Graham Baker. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an extra, extra special time together here at Studio C, Morningside USA. I'm not kidding. You are not going to want to miss one minute of this broadcast. We have so much to share with you. But before we do, I just got to get this sneak peek in real quick. Here we go. We just had on our show the other day, Rick and Denise Renner. They were amazing. All I can say is this. I have been studying out of his Sparkling Gems devotional for many, many, many years. It is the best devotional of all time, and now he's come out with Sparkling Gems 2 devotional and his new book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight When the World Has Gone Crazy. Look how I marked up my book. Wow. Uh huh. It talks all about what's going on right now, today, and how to stay sane while we're living in a crazy time. You aren't going to want to miss one minute of that Jim Baker show taping, plus DVDs. You can get that, that offer. It's, a, I think, a $70 offer. All you have to do is just um, go to PTL shop forward slash Life with Lori. You can get it right now and go ahead and do that. It also, it'll be on the Jim Baker show. I just wanted to let you know about that. We also yesterday taped all day long with Dr. Vincent Peter, Peter Pry. He is one of the most, um, he's, an, he's an expert, he's an authority, he's been the CIA, he's been so many, he's just he's, uh, the EMP. You aren't going to want to miss one minute of it. So get ready, watch those shows on the Jim Baker Show. I got to give you those sneak peeks of Jim Baker shows coming up. Don't miss them. Today, I have to just say first, I'm kind of holding back tears. Um, I want to sound more up and happy and all that, because I really am inside. My spirit is leaping inside with joy because of who I have sitting next to me. And who I have sitting next to me is an absolute fulfillment of a prophetic word that was spoken over me by Cindy Jacobs. One day when we were out to eat with Mike and Cindy and she turned to me, and we were just talking about family. They, we had taped Jim Baker shows all day. And she just turned to me, like Cindy does, and she said, you are to build Lori's house to save babies from being aborted. A place for moms, a safe place. I was, like, on the way home, I said to Jim, honey, do you understand that if we build a place called Lord, first of all, I don't want anything named after me, but secondly, do you understand if we go a, come against abortion and try to save babies, do you know the hell we're going to go through? You better get ready for some warfare, Jim Baker. But I knew in my heart we needed to do this. And that was several years ago. And today, for the very, very first time, really, you're going to meet Lori's house moms and their precious babies with them, and they're going to tell their story. So hang on. I'm going to introduce them right now. I love these babies. I love these girls. I'm so proud of them. I can hardly hold back. I'm first going to introduce you, beautiful Elena. How are you? Good morning, Miss Lori. <clears throat> and I am honored. I am humbled. I am safe. <laughs> oh, and you're safe, and you're beautiful, and you're wonderful, <clears throat> and your precious baby <clears throat> girl, Aurora Sunshine. This is Aurora Sunshine. She is a month old tomorrow. Yes. And it's been an amazing month. Yes, it has. Thanks I mean, to Lori's house. <laughs> oh, and we're going to talk about that. That means so much to me. It really does. And I know that she was born um, on September 3rd, which I can always remember both of your babies. I will always remember both of their birthdays because um, Elena, Aurora was born the day before Pastor Jim's and mine 21st wedding anniversary. Really? Yes. And so, um, and then I want to introduce to all of you, 
beautiful Rose. Rose, I love you. You're so precious. She has a sweet spirit. This is Rose with her precious little guy, Adam Wayne. And Adam was born on August 28th, and he was born two days before my birthday. So I'm like, oh my goodness, these are, oh goodness. These are the babies that I will always remember. Look at this, you're looking at Adam right now. Isn't he precious, everybody? Yes, if there was a studio audience, they'd be going crazy. And, um, and then our precious, precious little Aurora Sunshine, beautiful name. What I wanna ask you guys is this first. I wanna ask you this question. How did you hear, and I'll ask you first, Elena, how did you hear about Lori's house? Well, it was back in March. I was on my mom's, a mattress on, in her living room and pregnant mm -hmm. with my sixth child and never, at t 28 years old, never imagined myself to, to having the life that, that I was having at that moment. Mm -hmm. My mom was... A woman is a woman of faith, and she was watching the Jim Baker show, and something popped up that talked about Lori's house, and she told awesome. me, "Just, just look. I looked it up online. It's amazing. I, you have to, you have to look it up and sign up for it." And I went online and looked, and I was like, "There's no, no way. <laughs> like, there, this is gorgeous, <laughs> and it's gonna save my life that has been so." broken in this world by mm -hmm. me and everyone around me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. I want to hear your story. Everybody's going to want to hear your story. I know your story, but you're going to get to hear these girls' story because they are real, they're honest, and they're open about it, and they're doing it because you know what the, you know what the word says? That, that the enemy, he is overcome by what? The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And this is why this is why many years ago I decided to tell my story of five abortions and the, my crazy life in front of tens of thousands of ministers and at a conference. And I'm like, oh my, my gosh, what are you doing, Lori? And then I wrote it in my book, more than I could ever ask right here. Mm -hmm. By the way, you can get this book that tells my story for a gift to the ministry of just $25, and I'll autograph it for you. Wow. Um, but all that to say, how did you, Rose, how did you hear about Lori's house? Well, um, actually, I was in Springfield when I found out I was pregnant, and um, I didn't know what to do. I was on the streets, and you were literally on this. I was literally sleeping on people's couches. Mm. Yes. Um, I didn't sleep on the streets. Thank God I had enough friends mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. let me sleep on their couches. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I would sleep in a bed <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they weren't going to be home that night or whatever. But right. um, anyway, so whenever um, I was trying to get into a shelter, right. um, I'm like, listen, I'm pregnant, I'm doing drugs, and mm -hmm. I need off the streets. Like, I need somewhere to go. Yeah. And they're like, well, can you pass a drug test? I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot pass a drug test. And so I would get clean for a couple days here, a couple days there, and right. then I'd go right back to using, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't keep myself clean on the streets. Mm -hmm. So I checked myself into a rehab that didn't last. There was black mold growing in there. They gave mm -hmm. me, like, a... a pizza pocket for dinner. I was like, I eat better than, I better, I eat better than this on the street. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. This mm -hmm. is crazy. Really? So I did. And so anyway, I, I got turned down by five, um, five places turned me down mm -hmm. for um, somewhere to live. And it was all because I couldn't pass a drug test. Well, I got a phone number from one of those places. They said, try Lori's house. And I said, okay. And so I Got called the number, and um, I guess Miss Becky, it had to have been Miss Becky that answered. Mm -hmm. And I said, are you guys taking applications? And she said, yes, absolutely. And I, she goes, but you need to go online and fill out the application. I was like, okay. So I went online, filled out the application. Three days later, 
I get a phone call from Miss Becky, and she says, me and my husband, Joe, would love to take you out for breakfast one morning and just get to meet you in person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? <laughs> you want to meet me in person? Aww. And so they said, yeah. And, and I honestly believe that was the only food I ate that day Oh my was goodness. when they came and bought breakfast for me. And, and I don't think I ate the rest of the day. And you were pregnant. Uh, pregnant, yeah. With starving. Little, <laughs> but, starving with little baby Adam. Mm -hmm. And look how perfect he is. And he has yeah. the most precious temperament. I'm not kidding. I'm like, I just love him so much. <laughs> I just love both these babies so much. My heart is just, I'm trying not to cry, but um, Elena, tell me your story. When you said six, this is your sixth child. Yeah. Where are your other children? I'm from Kentucky. I was, I'm 28 years old, and I'm the oldest of four. Um, I started off in a home filled with love, you know, to begin yes. with. Yeah. And devil just beat down year after year something, something new, like three years old, parents divorced, you know. Right. Four years old, they both got new husbands and wives, divorced the next year, next year. And it just, like, it, it kept going. And mm -hmm. as much as my grandparents wanted to protect me, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. they they couldn't protect right. me from like there's too many people around, too many influences, not yes. enough um, God instilled like divorce ruins families mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. The courts ruin take rights away from parents mm -hmm. when they just want to love, and then distance happens, and it just it it it's an avalanche just keeps continuing. That's right. So by my teen years, I it was. I was an explosion of anger and mm -hmm. just running wild, whatever I could do to to fill the hole inside of me where I didn't have a stable environment and the Lord in there, mm -hmm. I, I did. I was pregnant by 17, thought that I could um, get married, you know, by right. 18, and right. it was just going to fill that hole, right? Right. Um, I didn't know how to, we didn't know how to take care of ourselves. We didn't know anything about credit and bills. And right. we ended up um, having three children together by the time I was 24. My grandparents paid for our houses, our bills, and um, we thought that was normal, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. it, it was our normal. It was. But um, when you don't have to take your own responsibilities in life, you it will get destroyed. You don't have God. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. We were just kids with a house and with kids. <laughs> that's right. And so, so then what happened? <laughs> your kids ended up... Yes, we a divorce happened. And during that divorce, everybody came together and decided that they knew what was best. And I mean, we never had... Even though we were... Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Divorce happened. Court got in there. Um, our kids are now separated in three different homes mm. within the family. They mm -hmm. have to do therapy. Mm -hmm. They don't understand why they can't just be with their parents. Right. And um, that destroyed me. That was my only identity was being a mother. And, mm. um, and my purpose, I believed, but I just wasn't doing the right things. And um, when that was gone, then everything was gone. I, I turned to... Um, drinking uh, and not drugs. I didn't go that route, but <laughs> but drinking was but, your yeah. was what you did to, it, to numb the pain yeah. to escape. I ended up having two DUIs, and of course that just made my children further and further from me. Sure. And I quickly just thought, oh, I'll just have more children. You know, like they their custody is gone of those children, and I only see them on the weekends or. or and so that's what you did. Yeah, you had, that's exactly you had, what I did. And you had how many more then? I, I had two more little boys. Um, their current ones currently one and two, mm -hmm. and I, I was on birth control when she um, decided to arrive, and her, <laughs> her dad was young, and I just was making mistake after mistake because I wasn't having, following the word of God mm -hmm. and having the right people around me. Right. And the, the selfishness of the world out there and what mm -hmm. the courts do, like, it could all have been different if, if the world was meant the way God Mm -hmm. wanted it to be, but mm -hmm. that's not what happens. And Satan rules the court systems and the families these days. That's right. Because the, what the Bible says is, it says that, that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did 
knowing he, yes. th that God has an amazing purpose for your life, Elena. You yes. are such an amazing girl. I say girl because to me, you're 28. You're a girl. You're young. You're a girl. <laughs> and, but, but yet, here you are, a mother of six, and now you, this little precious, gorgeous, baby little girl, Aurora Sunshine. Social services wouldn't get out of my life by my fifth child. Like, they were... They were um, determined to prove that I was um, mentally incapable and just just incapable of a person to be around a child. Like even though there wasn't any, just because um, the courts were involved in my life and I didn't have them, the children with me, mm -hmm. there was no proof of um, mental problems. But they wanted to give me a label like mm -hmm. to where mm -hmm. to give me a reason mm -hmm. to not have any more kids I ended up running to California last um, the summer of 2018 and thinking that I was uh, believing everybody that I was that way and I'm mm -hmm. um, gonna give my children up my child I was currently pregnant with up for adoption um, and I was almost there. I was a. I, I literally was hopped on a train back to Kentucky, mm. scared at the last moment, and went straight to a hospital to give birth. And because I wasn't living right and um, around the right people, had a good support system. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I got back, they they the Kentucky hospital informed um, social services, and they came right there and. Uh, took took him immediately two two days in the hospital and like that nothing destroys a woman more for me than than getting a child ripped from you the minute you give birth mm. and you just walk back out on the streets you, you know like I, a child ripped literally ripped from you from your womb yeah yes. and yeah. then you just have to buck up and and walk out yeah I, I'll never forget that feeling it, it was a different different you gave birth. But then that baby was taken still away. gone, still gone. And and I, I'll never forget being 17 years old, and and because my husband at the time said, you know, you're gonna go have an abortion, and went into that for that five minute procedure that they said was just a little bit of tissue, and I laid on that table, but I had to walk out of that room, and I'll never forget walking down that street waiting for him just to come p p up to pick me up and you just you're changed for life you are, yes you just have to buck up and just act like nothing's happened and you have to go on with life yes but we had two choices after that we could either die away right you know like let depression get us take That's medicine right. live in a hole of darkness blaming god and letting Satan come into our hearts the way he wanted to. That's right. You know, he wanted those moments to destroy us. Yes, you that's know? right. That's right. But Elena, look at you now. Here you've been at Lori's house for how long? Five five months. Five months, yeah. And tell me about Lori's house and what it's done for you. I, I came here. Um, and honestly, like God, when I was getting ready to come here, I I knew that it was going to be a change that I've never got to feel before. I didn't know how, right? but I just from talking, the minute I got to talk to Becky mm -hmm. on the phone, I heard a genuine... Becky, run, Becky runs Lori's house. Yes, She's been Becky, on our broadcast before. House. She's Pastor Joe's yes. wife. And, yes. And, and we've known Becky and, and Joe. There's Becky right yeah. there. And um, it takes a special person to run Lori's house, which is beautiful. And what did you think about it when you walked into Lori's house? I walked in the door after talking to this woman that was so Christian that I I never got to experience real real Christianity that I read about in the Bible from people. I mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. I was skeptical, but after meeting this woman, mm -hmm. it just and he, even just hearing her voice on the phone before I came and like how this place was going to impact and really help me just gave me immense hope immediately like but of course I was still very scared I was in sure. Miss Becky's office many many times <laughs> these past five months mm -hmm. crying about how the hospital was going to go from the trauma that I experienced before like even though I'm here uh, am I going to get to stay here with my daughter you mm -hmm. know like, the, mm -hmm. like I just want to be a mom I want to uh, be a mom for all the other kids too but I need somewhere to start I need a ground to stand my feet on and uh, 
and this place believes in you, even though you don't deserve it. You know, just you feel like, like God you don't does. Deserve it. Yeah, we feel like we, right. as all humans, we feel like we don't deserve. You know the things that God's we get. best. Yeah, God's best. And but you walk into Lori's house. Could treated. you imagine how beautiful it was when you walked in? I. <laughs> I just days, have to say. For days. Yeah. I came here on Mother's Day, like the Mother's Day weekend mm. of, of Lori's house. And I mean, I did the tour and saw my room and cried. Like, and then the next morning, the very next morning that I was here, I went to um, the Jim Baker Show Church and <laughs> you were there. And there was, you know, gifts and beautiful brand new Bibles and, and, and treats. And I know that's not what it's about, but we felt like women, like like you this got, place, you had, you, it was giving your dignity back. Yeah, giving to my you. dignity back you've after giving laying back the to you. When you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> really. After you, after you feel like you've you've made all a lot of wrong choices yes. in life, and and you feel like you don't deserve God's best, but that's a life. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from Satan. And now, look at this amazing young woman of God who actually, I don't know if you know it yet or not. I don't think you do, but. I think you might be called to preach a little bit because you're already ministering as you're holding this. I baby. just want everybody to know that there's hope, yes. whether it's through Lori's house or or anywhere else that you find that God gives you that hope. Like if you can be broken and on this, literally on the streets, like feeling like literal trash, but if mm -hmm. you just allow God to take control, to quit having control of your life, like it fails. I That's was having five kids, um, relationships, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. trying to do it all on my own. It's a failure. Like right. with without God, it's a failure. That's like, right. And you know, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, "For I know the plans I have for you," saith the Lord. That their plans that not to harm you, but to prosper, to prosper you, to help you. You know all the different translations that are out there. And you know the main thing. Elena, right now for you is, I just want to speak this into you and of course, I mean, into both of you and you're going to need to stay tuned for part two, which will be next week because we're going to hear all about Rose's story. But I, what you both need to know is what the Bible says is train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yes. So therefore, as you pour the word into your babies as you speak life into them, as you tell them how much Jesus loves them, and you sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, holding them. They will always know they're loved because he did knit these precious babies together in your wombs. He knit them together. He knew them before they were even formed. That's what the word of God says. I mean, it's so amazing. God is real. Yes. God is real. And Lori's house is a place of hope and healing. And today I want to say to you that in order to keep this broadcast on the air, in order to keep Lori's house going, we're going to need your help. Most, a lot of you out there, you help build Lori's house, and it costs several million dollars to build it, but we need help with the operating expenses. Listen, when you have a lot of girls, and they're pregnant, <laughs> they gotta eat, and they're gonna <laughs> eat good, believe me. And, but the operating expenses, and I know people don't even like to talk about this, but you know, it costs money to turn the lights on. It costs uh, you know, electricity, and you have heat in the, yes. in the winter, and, and you have you know, air conditioning, thank the Lord, in the summer here in, in Missouri where it gets a little uh, humid. But we do have to keep the operating expenses of Lori's house going on. And I, I know I was called for this moment to tell you exactly what Elena just told you. There's hope. And that's what Lori's house is all about. So any products that we offer, we offer so many products, like my book, for $25. Listen, I ran into a lady the other day, just literally ran into her. It was the oddest thing. It was one of those beautiful moments. And she just said, I just ran into a store, and she goes, I'm reading your book right now. Oh, wow. <gasps> Lori, I'm reading your book right now. I go, where did you get my book? She goes, I just saw it laying at a salon somewhere. And, oh. And she said, and she started crying. And she said, can I hug you? I said, yes. Oh my goodness, it was so beautiful that I couldn't even believe, I couldn't even believe it. <sighs> and 
but just even my book for $25 and I'll autograph it for you. Or we have something really special today. These darling, darling, they're brand new, brand new. I gotta take them off the stand and show you. Look at this, there's a little pink, little lamb. This is pink actually. I don't know if the monitor is showing the color, but for a little girl, it's a little pink, uh, it's a white and pink lamb and a little um, blanket to go with it for a girl. And then we have one for a baby boy. So we have, a. Sp I asked my daughter, Maricela, who does all the product and runs the ministry. I said, can you make a special deal for, for this, for Life with Lori? And she said, yes, mom. What, 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 do you, what do you need? I go, well, I need a special deal. Like, you know, when you're a grandma you, and you have a boy and a, and a girl, you know, grandson or granddaughter, you want to get him. So all that to say that, sorry, I'm looking at time cues, you guys. Um, all that to say, the little lamb with blanket, you can choose pink or blue blanket. It's $25 each, or if you buy two, and you can, you can mix and match. I mean, you can get two pink or two blue or whatever you, but buy two, there's a good shot, there you go. Buy two for $40, mm. and that is an amazing value, and you're gonna love these. I walked into the product room the other day, and I saw them, and I said, oh, Nana, I love these. Where did you get these? She's like, Mom, you really do? I go, I love them. I want them, as a matter of fact, Today, I'm giving Elena your gift. Oh, really? Uh -huh. This one. I'll hold it for you right now yes. for our precious, precious little Aurora Sunshine Faith. I, I, and it's my lamb collection. I've collected everything at Lori's house. <laughs> she does because she wears all her lambs. I do, She's often. So I love it. And, and also Rose for precious little Adam. Thank you. And we are going to hear Rose's story on our next show, which will be next week. You're want you're gonna want to hear part two. You're not gonna want to miss a minute <laughs> of Rose's story. These girls are so brave. You have so much courage to come out and tell the whole world your story. I never thought that I would have this opportunity to be for of course to be sitting here, you know, in this um, <laughs> environment, but just to be a mother and feel like a woman again. You are. Thank you. You're a mom. Thank, thank you, you for are. saving my life. Like you're welcome. I could not imagine going any more time, laying there with knowing that my souls are somewhere else. You know. That's right. And you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes. And, and that is the most important that's, that's thing. That's the most important thing. That Jesus is the Lord of your life, which he's, that means he's our master, our owner, our possessor. And Rose, and you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, ma'am. And today could be your day. Today could be, like I always say, your Easter Sunday. The day I walked down the aisle in 1989 at a big church and I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I mean, for real, be the Lord of my life. And I, oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, you're so sweet. I love her. I love her. I love these girls. I'm just falling in love with them more every day. Every moment I see them. Oh, it's kind of, you guys don't even know how this is rocking my world. Deep inside, Bobby, if you're watching, my best friend, you're probably sobbing right now. Pat, my cousin, mom, I mean, everybody who's watching live, you guys who really know me, you know how deep this goes. And so I just want to say, if you don't know the Lord, now's your time, or maybe you've known him before, but you haven't fully given your heart to him. He loves you. Yeah. He wants all of you. And right now can be your time. Just ask him in to forgive you of your sins. Keep short accounts with God. And with God, all things are possible. They're telling me I have to go right now. <laughs> I'll see you next time. My life is Lori. I love you. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>